But I am going to go over kind of the, some of the basic duties of the board member first and what you do generally in your day to day. But before I jump into that, I really wanted to kind of put a face to my face. So what, you know, the, the description seems kind of intimidating, but I wanted you to understand who I am and then maybe that will humanize it a little bit more for you. So I'm just a girl from South Austin. Hey, y'all. I went to Crockett High School, 94, go Coots. Um, I'm not a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, not yet, maybe later. Uh, I've been licensed for se seven years. We've sold about 35 million in that time, so I'm not a huge, huge producer, but I do get around. Uh, my background prior to volunteering here at ABOR was in neighborhood politics, and I worked in high tech as a project manager and did a little bit of database stuff, so I've kind of been around the corporate world a bit. Um, so as Emily mentioned, when you serve on the board of directors, you do serve on two boards. So you have actress in the MLS. Uh, we do provide just kind of basic oversight. I don't go hang out at Amy's desk and tell her how to do her job. <laughs> so people who don't know Amy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wait, am I slacking off? <laughs> Um, so yeah, we don't strongly interfere. We follow the strategic plan, we provide the vision, we follow bylaws and the governing policies. Uh, we do oversee the financials for both of the boards. I'm not a CPA nor an accountant. That's not my forte, but we have some amazing staff here and we work together to uh, go through those things. Uh, we do have one employee, as Emily mentioned. It's Emily. <laughs> uh, we do manage and evaluate Emily, and she in turn turns around and manages her staff. Her staff. We have written performance metrics for her, and um, you know we're watching closely. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so sometimes we do have to go into the weeds a little bit, and the directors will create a task force. So I, I just got appointed to the task force that's going over our policies right now and reviewing charters. And that is where we separately, away from our meetings, kind of dig in and make sure that uh, everything's on the same page, moving our organization forward. Um, we also have a few officer positions. We have one with us here today, Romeo. Hey. I was just elected to be the secretary, uh, what? Treasurer. Yeah, secretary treasurer is another one. So we have president elect, president, past president, secretary treasurer, and we hold those elections together on, on the board. We vote for them there. So that doesn't go out to the membership, but we've all served with each other. So I feel like we're in a good position to pick those people. Um, we go to events. This is the fun part. So I'm gonna kind of dive into what's your day to day. So currently, we have a contest on which director goes to the most events, and actually, we don't have a contest. But if we did, I think Joe would win it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So one part of our strategic plan is to meet members where they are, right? We don't want to just sit up here on this pretty, pretty hill and look out at the trees and wait for you to come to us. We're coming to you. And so one of the ways that we do that is we go to various events. Um, I love showing up to the events and meeting members, and that's honestly my favorite part of the job is, I would say, that. Not reading bylaws word by word, like <laughs> that's not my favorite part. Um, but I do love going to the events, and uh, like I mentioned, we're not here to tell staff exactly how to do their job. So that is not something that you'll be tasked with. We trust Emily to do that, and uh, trust is, I think, very important in what we do. Um, we all have our various passions about real estate. We are not here to maybe take down real estate disruptors. That's just not our primary task. We're following our strategic plan and bylaws. Um, most importantly, and this is my second favorite part of the job, aside from meeting members, is listening to members. We are here for membership. We're here for the association. We're here for everybody. And when we make decisions, we think about the impact to members. We have a, one director that no matter what committee you're sitting in her with, she'll say, what about members? You know, how does this impact our membership? Because we are here for you guys. We are here because of you guys. Um, oh yeah, don't forget to watch our online broadcast. Has anyone ever watched the Facebook Live events of our meetings? Super fun, so I didn't mean to out you. But I, that's actually a really, really good way to see exactly what we're doing day to day. How we use Robert's rules to conduct our meetings, you know, how we interact with each other. Sometimes if we suddenly disappear, we might be going into executive session, uh, but we promise to come back around. And then member input is always uh, a good time. Um, 
And so the president will chair our meetings. So Kevin Scanlon is our president right now, and he chairs the meetings, and he runs them and keeps us on task. And one of my favorite things about what he does is he makes sure that every director gets heard. So we try to be pretty orderly about um, how we tackle our issues. And he'll write down, like, OK, Ashley had a question. Ashley, you're next. And then after you, and he keeps a little list. And it really keeps us on track so we're not talking over each other. And we make sure that everyone gets heard, and we all get our chance to have input. Um, so I wanted to tell you what my week was like this week, just to kind of give you the day to day. So on Monday, I came in and worked on governing policies for about three hours. And it was my choice to serve on that. So that you know, if you find that you want to be here, but you can't dive into the weeds, there are directors that do that too. They're here for the meetings and go to some events. You know, They maybe don't have time to be on a task force or something like that, but I chose to do this. So for three hours on Monday, I did that. And then I did a quick little KXAN interview about the land development code. I started at ABOR on the legislative management team, or really on the growth and development committee, the, which can feed up to the legislative management team. So Austin's politics are my bread and butter. I just love it. It's like a hobby, slightly dangerous sometimes. <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, I did a KXAN interview, and we talked about that. Uh, and then after that, staff grabbed me really quick to do a quick uh, Facebook Live social media interview talking about today's training. And that, and that was my, my time there. And then we had a um, conference call this week that we did very quickly. You know, easy. I was able to do that on the fly. And then here I am today with you guys. And this is, a, I wouldn't say a fairly typical week, um, maybe a little bit more board time than normal, but uh, it's completely manageable. I do sell full time. That is my full time job. I am a mom. I have kids, I'm a wife, and you're able to, if you stay tied to your calendar like I do, you're able to make it all work out. Um, what else do I have for you guys? Uh, oh, yes, this is my, my very favorite part. I love talking about who is on our board, as in what they bring to the table. Everyone is unique. We all have different backgrounds. I have a background in speech writing and presentations. Just kidding, I don't, not at all, <laughs> not at all. But there are some amazing people sitting at that table together. So I, I kind of bring in neighborhood politics. We have a couple of tech nerds on our board. You may have heard of them. We have agents that work in development and know everything about Austin's code, or for example. Then we have super fa famous directors like Shay, who's <laughs> been doing some cameos on the news, talking about uh, things you can do for your house. And actually, I think she's really superseded by her dog, Bruiser, who possibly is should maybe be running for director. I don't. I haven't seen his application come through yet, but I'm going to check with her after this and see if he's up for it. Um, so yeah, we've got also a budget hawk, which is good. And you just want a variety of people at that table. And I think that's the most important thing. And Emily touched on that very nicely. But that makes us stronger as a group. So you may not imagine yourself as like a really super self-important, I'm the president of everything. But there's still a spot for you at the table. And that, that's what I really wanted to tell you guys today. So. In my short time as director, I've been a director since January, I've worked on some really big issues that I never thought I would be working on. And it has been an amazing experience. And the staff really you know, provides you the backup for that. And it's a nice relationship that we have with them and truly amazing staff. And I think that's what keeps me coming around ABOR. I've been hanging out here since 2014, you know, serving on a committee here and there. And this association is wonderful to work with. Um, so really just wanted to humanize it for you guys and really make it known that there's a place for you at this table. And if later you've got some questions, look me up. I'm pretty easy to find online. I'm a realtor. You might have heard of me. Let's hang out. Let's talk. Let's get a coffee. If somehow you missed the deadline, the May 31st deadline, that's what I did last year. I was still thinking about it. And so I was a petitioner. And the year prior, in 2017, I was one of the nominees. So I'm familiar with both processes and happy to answer any questions that you have. Do you have any other questions? Mr. Wright. I'll put you on the spot. OK. You know, and I don't know if you know that I actually went by him. I've got a few minutes. I stepped up because Secretary Treasurer. Yes. You know, I mean, a hot seat. I mean, that's hot. A lot, of, a lot of people don't even do that uh, for a term. So I wanted you to, since we have a couple of minutes, just share a little bit about why uh, you feel it's important to serve and why, why did you? 
So service is in my nature. And I think that's true for a lot of real estate agents, right? That's one reason we get into this career track. We like to help people. And I, I think that's really what led me to wanting to be on the board. Uh, you know, I, I worked, uh, I was on the legislative management team here, which really works on that public policy agenda, which you have here in front of you, um, put that together. And it was through that time that I saw the great work that could be done here. I really didn't have any, I didn't spend any time working on bylaws, so I wasn't versed with that side, but it was my passion for Austin politics that drew me in to that part of uh, the association. And so that's why I continue to do it and why I stepped up to be secretary treasurer. Uh, that is kind of a detail-oriented job, I would say. And um, that's not necessarily like my favorite thing. If you said, Ashley, what's your number one trait? I probably would not list detail-oriented. <laughs> but I would say curiosity. And that is absolutely what I'm, I aim to do is learn more. That, and every day and everything that I'm doing, I want to learn more and expand my knowledge about things. And I think that is true about almost all of our directors. Like we're constantly putting more feathers in our cap. And so that drew me to uh, apply to the secretary treasurer position. It also puts you on a few more committees automatically by being the secretary, secretary treasurer. And I wanted to get that experience, like the audit committee, for example. So I'm just kind of digging in deeper. Even though I'm new to the board, I thought that this would be a way to really enhance my experience and beef up my resume. So did I answer your question for you, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Okay. Any other questions? No? No? Awesome. Matthew. Yes, Matthew. The current MLS committee and the current board are going to be served by the same people. Yes, the Am board. Am correct that that happens next year, but then the year after there's an election for the MLS board of directors separates from the board of directors? I can speak to that. Um, we began this year, I'm sorry, I'm not mic no. We began this year just by separating the meetings so that you wear one hat at one time. Okay. Um, and while I believe that one day we will redefine the board structure that is serving the MLS, the timeline on that is somewhat nebulous, especially given our current climate with our MLS vendor and some of the other kind of big right. things that are happening okay. in our market right now. Okay. So yeah. you would be running to serve both entities right now and for the relatively near foreseeable future. Right. And logistically speaking, both those meetings are on the same day. I and mean, people who watch on Facebook would see that. Yeah, we're, we do them back to back. It's all one. Yeah. yeah, it's like really all one thing. They do have separate agendas and separate executive sessions, but it does occur all in one day, once a month. Any other questions? Jeff. Thank you for volunteering. Um, have you noticed an impact in your business, negative or positive, by taking on the show? You know, that is a really good question. Um, so I happen to be having the best year I've ever had right now in my sales, personally. And I don't know if that's necessarily related to uh, being a director here, if uh, my SOI, which I'm very active on Facebook, and I really target um, my network through Facebook and post things that I know that my network is into. And so when I go to events, I absolutely will do a check-in so that they can see that I'm really active in the community in Austin. And when they think of who knows Austin, I want them to think of me. So in that way, yeah, I, I am leveraging this opportunity. Not only am I serving you guys, but I'm also serving my sphere of influence. So I, don't, I have not had a negative impact. Um, I don't, not that I'm aware of. Um, it just happens to be a really good year, y'all. So <laughs> I hope everyone's doing really well. I, from what I hear, a lot of members are having a great year. Um, did I answer your question on the way, Joe? Yeah. Anything else? Yes, Kate. What's um, the actual term of service? Is it like a calendar year, January to December? So that, de yes, it is a calendar year, but also that depends. Okay. So one of the positions is a short straw, and you'll get one year. Um, so this year, last year, that was John, right? No, Joe. Joe, I know this or the year before. <coughs> Didn't you have it one year? You got the two year. Okay, so most of the terms are three year, right? And then two year and one year, Joe, which is why he's here with us today. So there are different years. Depends on the votes. What was that, Vicki? There's five, five positions okay. open, and they're all for three year terms. They're all three year? None of them are there one year? Because oh, we have a current sitting one year. Okay. Thank you. See how we rely on staff that keep us on the straight and narrow, y'all. That's awesome. <laughs> Vicki is a walking database. <laughs> this is merely her interface that you see before you. <laughs> um, did that answer your question? So yes, it is January. So you would be applying this year. 
Positive sales reinforcement, you're applying this year, yes, yes, All right? And so when you make it, um, there will be a uh, leadership retreat that we'll go to. What is the date of that, Vicki? October 24th. 24th and 25th? Yes. Yeah. Whoa, I actually remember something, y'all. So yeah, so we'd go to that retreat, and then you go home and you hang out for a little bit, and then you join us at the table in January. Okay. Yeah. For three glorious years, okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to focus you. Um, how, how heavily weighted is like past committee experience and, and such? Because yeah. when I was fairly new um, and wanted to get more involved, it was incredibly difficult to get involved with a board unless you knew the right people. Oh, yeah. Um, that, and I, yeah. And honestly, I got discouraged. Sure. I, I did serve on a committee that, uh, where we really didn't do anything. Oh, no, that's a bummer. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but this is my attempt to, to like, blow that off again. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for your perseverance, first of all. I completely appreciate that. Uh, so committee work is not a requirement for applying for this position. Committee work can give you some insight into what happens at the association, unless it's a lame committee that nothing happens on. That's kind of lame. I don't know that we have those committees anymore. I think they're all pretty awesome now. Um, but there are some committees that are less like committees now and more like uh, uh, events. Um, and a lot of the government affairs committees are like that. What was that? Yeah, advocacy groups. Thank you, John. Um, so that is a way that you could plug in now in case, you know, we open up committee applications in October. So in case someone misses that, that is a way to plug in without actually sitting in a committee, you know, an hour every month or something like that. But it is not a requirement to answer your question no longer. But it does help to know more things. Yeah. Miriam. 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 John. Uh, so the way that it works, uh, the, the nominating committee in the past selected the people they wanted to push up to the vacant board seats. Now the, the objective is to get as many people to, many qualified people to apply as possible. Uh, if there are more than 10, then the nominating committee will suggest 10 to the board. The board of directors will make a decision. I guess they'll send them all to the board, like the board of directors will make a decision. Is that correct? Is, is this, are you talking about committees the, the, or? The nominating, no, just the nominating the process. So it's not, you're not actually being excluded from the process unless. For, for the board of directors, it goes to the membership, not to the board. No, I mean, there, there's 10 that, that are put up right. for <coughs> the election. Yes. Right. right. Correct. So Correct. if there are 15 people who apply for the board of directors, then the board of directors is going to select the 10 people right. that go based off of the recommendations from the nominee. The vetting committee will select the 10. Actually, yeah, the, the vetting committee does. Right. So, right. So, the board right. Is, is right. so I know what you're speaking to, though, and right. I'll clarify for you. So in the past, when there were five positions, there were five people prior to um, 2018. There were five people, and they would just kind of automatically go up to the board. But now it's an actual true election with two people for each. So your peers will select you. You vote. You know, you go. That's part of this is teaching us how to go out and campaign mm -hmm. and do this. So what's the difference between the nominating committee and the vetting? Same committee. Same. Just got renamed. We changed the name. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's now vetting. And also the scope is expanded a little bit, and so we kind of we look at other areas, not just the nomination for the board of directors. Hence the rename. We confuse people with naming things. The same thing uh, has multiple names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so some of the <laughs> some of the work of the task force that I'm serving on is making sure that in our governing policies we don't say nominating, right? We say vetting. Just little details like that. Did that answer your question, Marion? Okay. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.